Hello, good morning. Welcome to this presentation of blood groups and types. The membrane of red blood cells or the RBCs contains a large number of antigens known as agglutinogens. Well defined groups based on the presence of agglutinogens are as follows. The major blood groups are those present in all individuals and include the ABO system and the RH system. Now let us look at the uh, different types of blood groups and go a little more in detail. The ABO system. This system is based on the presence or absence of antigens on the surface of the RPCs. Carl Landsteiner's law. Carl Landsteiner in the 1900s described the ABO system. Four distinct blood groups are recognized in this system and they are designated as the A, B, A, B and O. This is determined by the presence or absence of A and B agglutinogens on the red cells. The genes which control the ABO antigens are located on the long arm of chromosome number 9. There are other types such as the MNS, Lutheran and Kel, Kid and Bombay. The other system is called as the Reuses system or the RH system. They are RH positive and RH negative. Furthermore, we will find that the antigens of the ABO system are agglutinogens A and B, while the antibodies are the agglutinins anti-A and anti-B. Agglutination. This is a process of clumping of the red cells. Now, this is showing us the different blood types, the red blood cells and the plasma. If you look at type A, it has A antigen and the plasma cannot contain anti-A and therefore it contains anti-B, antibody. Type B. B antigen is present on the surface and in the plasma we find anti-A antibody. When it comes to type AB, we find both the antigens A and B on the surface of the red blood cells, but neither anti-A nor anti-B antibody is found. The O type contains uh, neither the A nor the B antigens and it contains both the antibodies uh, that is anti-A and anti-B. This slide shows the anti-A, anti-B and anti-D antiserum. 
and the serums of these. Now, if you were to take a sample of blood and treat it with these anti-sera, we find that if there is a agglutination or clumping in the anti-A anti-sera, then the person belongs to type A. If we find the reaction taking place in the B, we call it as the type B. If we find the reaction or clumping or agglutination taking place in both the anti-sera A as well as anti-sera B, we find it is, it is called as the anti the AB group. While the, there is no reaction at all, then this is called as type O. Next is the rhesus blood grouping. It is the rhesus monkey. What we have seen here, it was found in these for the first time. And that is how it came into existence. The rhesus blood group system was demonstrated by Landsteiner and Weiner in 1940 in human red, cell, red blood cells by the use of the rhesus monkey. It was found that some human red cells were agglutinated by the serum and were called as Rh positive cells while others were not and they were called as the Rh negative cells. According to this there are two groups in this system namely the Rh positive and the Rh negative. Uh, the most common uh, anti Rh antigen is called the D antigen and its antibody is called as anti-D. 85% of the population are, are, are Rh positive and their red cells contain Rh antigen on their cell membrane. Uh, the serum uh, of such individuals contains no Rh antibody. About 15% of the population are Rh negative and their red cells do not contain Rh antigen and their serum also does not contain any Rh antibody. This slide shows the reaction to the sample of blood with anti-A serum, anti-B serum and anti-D serum. So if you look at this, the answer will be that the person belongs to the A positive type of blood group. This slide shows the different types of blood grouping. If you look at the samples, you will find that number one, if you look across, you will find there is reaction in anti-A and anti-D. There is no reaction in any others and therefore this person belongs to type A positive. Number two, you will find the reaction or agglutination occurring in with anti-A, uh, anti-B and anti-D and this person belongs to the B positive group. In the third one, we find that there is reaction in with anti-A, anti-B and anti-D and therefore this person belongs to the AB positive type of group. The last one, that is the fourth one, we find that there is no reaction at all taking place in any of them and this person belongs to the O negative type of blood group. This is a slide to show how when a student performs the experiment will be able to find out his or her own blood group and enter their observations. So 
the ABO system, if you look at the blood genotype, the red blood cell surface protein, that is the phenotype, and the plasma antibodies, which is the phenotype. Type A, the genotype can be AA or AO. Uh, the red blood cell surface has only the A agglutinogen, whereas the antibody present in this person will be the anti-B. Type B, the genotype will be BB or BO and the surface of the red cells contain only the B agglutinogens. Uh, when as you look at the plasma antibodies, the person will have anti-A. Type AB, this person's genotype will be AB and the person has both A and B agglutinogens, whereas when the plasma antibodies are concerned, there will be none, that is neither A, anti-A nor anti-B agglutinins. Type O, neither A nor B type of agglutinogens. And this person's genotype will be OO and the plasma contains both the antibodies, anti-A as well as anti-B, that is agglutinins. So now let us look at the clinical scenario as to how this has an impact. Uh, now, if a RH negative mother carries a RH positive fetus, what complications are likely to occur and why? This slide shows the hemolytic disease of the newborn. Suppose this is the situation now where during delivery, the RH antigens enters the mother's circulation through breaks in the placenta. So the mother is RH negative and the fetus is RH positive. The mother makes anti-RH antibodies. Earlier, she would not have had any of these antibodies. During her subsequent or second pregnancy, the mother has anti-RH antibodies and again if she carries an RH positive fetus, we will find that the anti-RH antibodies cross the placenta and destroy the fetal blood cells and the fetal red blood cells get, get destroyed or hemolyzed. And this condition is called as erythroblastosis fetalis. Now, just a few words on the inheritance. Gene from his blood group and his blood type. Okay. Uh, each parent phenotype and the genotype. Both we are trying to take a look at. A plus A or A plus O. The person phenotype will be A and his genotype can be AA or AO. If the parents share B and B or B and O, the person's phenotype will be B and the genotype can be either BB or BO. Gene from each parent A and B the person's blood phenotype will be AB and the genotype also will be AB. If the genes from each of the parent is O and O, the blood phenotype will be O and the genotype will also be O. So what is the clinical importance of all this? 
one should understand that in blood transfusions blood typing is very essential we have what is called as major and minor cross matching then rh negative female before menopause should not be given an rh positive blood there is something called as autologous transfusion that is blood taken from the same person and transfused back into the same individual in pregnancy rh incompatibility as well as in paternity dispute these and medical legal cases you will find the blood groups of being very useful This slide shows the donor and the recipient. So the recipient who from whom can they receive the blood? If you look at the blood groups O it can receive the blood from the donor who is O group. Whereas the person belonging to a group also can receive the o blood group the b as well as the ab also can receive from the o group so therefore generally sometimes earlier they used to say that the donor with the blood group o is called as a universal donor but there is a caution we have to be very careful because it depends on the tighter level of the antibodies that they carry. If you look at donor A, the person can donate the blood to the recipient who is either blood group A or blood group AB. Okay? Whereas if the person belongs to the blood group B, the, as a donor, he can give the blood to a recipient who is having a similar blood group B or the group AB. AB can only give to AB and you will see that the AB group can receive blood from any of the blood groups. Therefore, they used to say that the AB blood group person is a universal recipient. Next, a few words about blood storage. After the blood is uh, taken out from the anticubital vein, uh, how is it going to be stored and where is it going to be stored? Blood is normally stored in the blood bank and they use an anticoagulant called as the acid citrate dextrose or ACD solution to, into which the blood is mixed. The pH is around 5.4, 10 volumes of the blood to 1.5 volumes of the ACD solution. They also use citrate phosphate dextrose adenine uh, solution which is called as a CPDA solution which has a pH of 5.6 to 5.8. Uh, 7 is to 1 is the ratio. Generally, it is stored at 4 degrees centigrade and it can be stored just about 15 days, not more than that. What is the advantage of this is the dextrose liberates lactic acid and therefore the pH gets affected and therefore it becomes acidic. Provides a substrate for cell metabolism. And uh, that is how the dextrose can help. And the cold storage is very essential to decrease the cell metabolism. And but also we must remember that the cell loses potassium ions. Plasma potassium uh, increases and therefore it can cause hemolysis. So therefore the red cells can become 
more fragile. Next, let us look at the dangers of blood transfusion. In apparent hemolysis can occur. Post transfusion hemolytic jaundice can also happen because of the hemolysis. Hemoglobinuria can be there due to the renal failure and therefore the blood uh, uh, appears in the urine. Hematuria along with the hemoglobinuria that is because of the lysis. Overloading of circulation can also take place because of more fluid volume. Stored blood lose potassium ions and that leads to hyperkalemia and death. That is sudden stoppage of the heart. Pyrogenic infections can also be introduced, allergic reactions, anaphylaxis and so on. So what are the dangers of blood transfusion? Stored blood lose the potassium ions leading to hyperkalemia and death. We have seen that. Citrated blood uh, gets ionized calcium and uh, this ionized calcium comes out and therefore uh, can lead to tetany. Pyrogenic infections, uh, allergic reactions and leading to anaphylaxis. Transmission of disease like malaria, AIDS and jaundice can also take place. So last but not least, we need to also look at the indications for transfusion. What are the situations where one needs a transfusion? Blood loss, accidents, surgery, blood disorders such as hemophilia, purpura, bone diseases, severe anemia, leukemia and when there are poisons. Uh, into introduced into the body like carbon monoxide poisoning and shock. Last but not least, let us look at a situation or a clinical scenario. A woman with type O RH positive blood married to a man with type A RH negative blood. They had a child and unfortunately there was a mix up uh, at the hospital of the five children listed below which one could have been conceived by this couple. The choices are there A, B, C, D and E. You have to make the choice. So what could be the answer? The answer is E, that is O group RH positive or O positive blood. Thank you very much for listening to this presentation. If you have any feedback, we would welcome that. Thank you very much.